Good afternoon, everyone. Isaac Krober with Aileron IT here. Thanks for everybody tuning in. Uh, we've got a couple of people just now checking in. I'm going to open up the chat window if anybody wants to throw out some questions. It's certainly interesting times we're living in, that's for sure. Uh, I wanted to address some bullet points, uh, some things I wanted to talk about and share with all of you. Uh, for those of you who are checking in, if you're business owners or your uh, individuals with influence at your company that can make decisions, then, uh, then these are some things that, that you'll want to talk about either internally or with your existing IT provider. And, and one of those things, you know, now that the dust has settled, uh, obviously here at Aileron IT, we were thrown under the bus with uh, all the uh, proactive IT providers worldwide. And that the, you know, the last four weeks, we basically uh, were forced, uh, and it was a pleasure to, for us to do so, uh, but we were forced to get all of the employees for companies that had to maintain 100% productivity we had to get their employees working from home. Uh, and that was something that some of our companies had already started doing uh, even months and years ago. So for some of those, it really wasn't a, a huge impact. It was a matter of getting you know, the rest of their workforce to work from home. But for other companies that were entirely office-based, that was a huge leap. And we were able to make it work, uh, fortunately, in a very short time frame. For most of our clients, uh, we had heard rumors uh, even before lockdown happened that our schools were going to be closing. And so we knew that, our, uh, that those employees with kids would need to start working from home as well. So we had about a week and a half jump time on a lot of IT providers. But still, when you're talking about as many clients as we serve, that wasn't a lot of time. So uh, we got it done. And uh, now, that, now that everybody's working from home or those that need to work from home are working from home, uh, we're, we're happy that they're able to do so and still maintain uh, almost 100% 100 product, 100 productivity. Now, some questions that uh, have come in, you know, now that the dust has settled and we've got everybody working from home, uh, a lot of IT providers simply, you know, us included, uh, you know, a lot of IT providers that had not established game plans for getting their employees working from home, uh, the, they uh, really were, uh, lost my train of thought here. Uh, a lot of IT providers that weren't prepared, they simply uh, started setting up uh, remote access solutions with ro without really thinking of the security implications. Uh, I just made up a word there, Im implications of doing so. And, uh, and what, we've, what we have found is that through conversations we've had with companies who are not our clients, uh, we found that those remote access solutions are not, they don't have security in mind. Uh, so corporate data could be leaking out, uh, those remote connections back into the corporate office now could be wide open for anybody to have access to. Um, you know, just because IT providers that weren't prepared for this, they didn't stop and think about security as a as a forefront to remote access for their clients' employees. And that is a huge, huge problem. Um, we've seen uh, in context of email, we've seen more phishing attempts that are coronavirus related. Uh, we've seen, you know, fake, you know, emails that have come out that report uh, medical test results with regards to coronavirus testing. Um, we've seen, um, you know, blood test results, urine test results. They're not exactly medically accurate in a lot of cases, but they, they don't need to be to get somebody's attention. All they need to do is get somebody's attention to receive that email and click on a link. And then by then the damage is done. So we want you to pay attention to those, those emails. If, they, if there's anything about coronavirus, COVID-19, et cetera, then make sure they are from a reputable source. And even if they're not from a reputable source that you've already had contact with, don't trust the, the links in those emails um, because even legitimate accounts do get compromised and hackers are paying attention to that. So and be aware of those emails. Um, some questions that have come in from, from uh, individuals who've requested or have been interested in this webinar. 
uh, how to go paperless. Obviously, we're all working from home. We don't have access to shared network printers, and you know we can't just walk a, a file folder down to our coworkers' office. So how to go paperless? Uh, there's some different technologies out there. Um, you know, obviously the uh, you, in Word, if you're using Word, Excel, Power, uh, excuse me, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, uh, any version, I believe it's 2013 or later, uh, you can build, you can save those files as PDFs and then email them or you know, send them up to your corporate network through your shared folders or your OneDrive or Google Drive account, whatever you're choosing to use. Uh, as far as other services that you're using, a lot of them now are cloud-based. So inside the, the confines of that cloud service, you can do file sharing securely as well. So, you know, we've been hearing about this paperless society concept for 20 some years. And uh, I think in, in today's world, we're actually going to see a lot of companies, uh, whether by choice or by, by circumstance, they're gonna be forced into figuring out, okay, how could we actually do a paperless uh, workforce? So, uh, you know, there's a lot of generic technologies out there. Obviously, you know, if you're on the uh, meeting here today, I don't know exactly your particular network and your particular uh, workflow impl implementations, but there are good options out there for any business workflow. Uh, another question, does remote work? Uh, for all companies? Absolutely not. Obviously, we know about uh, restaurants and uh, one of our vendors, they make uh, our company polo shirts. They can't remote work. Uh, so they're just figuring out different ways to do part-time scheduling or, um, you know, skeleton crew scheduling so that not their full staff is, is at the office or at their location all the time. So it really just depends on your business environment. If you're a law firm, if you're an accounting firm, uh, if you deliver professional services, if primarily your office is in an office and you're doing phone and email and passing uh, documents back and forth, the answer is probably yes. Yes, you can work remotely in those situations. Um, how to remote or how to reduce distractions at the remote workplace I do love this one um, because a lot of us do have children at home and uh, and it's and it's interesting to maintain sales calls or uh, you know doing a remote support or, or whatever it is that your business is doing and you know you've got children that are schooling from home now I get that the you know everybody's in this situation together we get it the as far as reducing those distractions uh, like I would suggest laying out some some simply uh, some time, you know, where if you're if you're able to set a, aside a, a little play space for your kiddos next to your office, then you can do that. Uh, set them up with an activity that will keep them engaged for you know 10, 15 minutes. It's just little blocks of time, of course, age appropriate. The older children are able to keep themselves occupied for longer, uh, self independently. So uh, that's an interesting uh, question. Another one, how to improve remote collaboration. So uh, this question I believe is coming from uh, a person who uh, it, it used to work entirely in an office and now they're you know, being forced into working from home as everybody is. There's a lot of different tools out there for remote collaboration. If you're an Office 365 customer, if you're business or your organization is already using Office 365, then look at Microsoft Teams. That is a great product for anybody that needs to collaborate, share files internally, um, chatting, video conferencing, that sort of thing. Of course, you're watching this on Zoom. We use Zoom for all of our uh, external communications. Um, so, uh, so like I said, uh, one, uh, Microsoft Teams is a great solution. There are the Google G Suite is a great solution if you're a Google G Suite customer. Otherwise, um, there's different collaboration tools out there. Slack, Zoom, obviously, we're using as well. And so you're, and especially if your company is uh, entirely server-based, so 
if everything that happens in your company is through your server or your set of servers back at the office, there might be something that your IT team can put together on that server uh, to en enable that collaboration so that all of your communications are kept internally and secured. So that would be something your IT team uh, could assist with. Last question, uh, how do you talk about, or how do you address, let's see, video conferencing, communicating uh, complicated business messages? Okay, um, <clears throat> so there's obviously Zoom is a huge uh, solution right now in the entire calendar year of 2019. They added 1.9 million customers, and in the month of March 2020 alone, they added 2.2 million customers. So obviously, if you haven't heard from or heard about Zoom by now, you are clearly living under a rock. I'll be honest about it. Uh, but there's other video conferencing tools out there. My wife's company, they use, and she's in the healthcare IT space, they use a product called Blue Jeans. Uh, Skype, of course, is a, another video conferencing tool. There's a lot of different video conferencing tools out there that, that could work for your organization. Uh, we've picked on Zoom. But again, other tools that are available. Uh, our daughter goes to a school here in the community we live in, and they use Google Hangouts uh, for their, their school education platform. So, you know, it just depends on your situation. What, what tools you end up needing that would work best for you and everybody that you need to work with as well. So, those are all the prepared questions that I had. I, I do see some other questions here. Let me read one of them. It looks like, um, uh, what have you heard about Zoom insecurity? So uh, good question. So Zoom obviously has grown an amazing, uh, amazing amount in the last couple months just because of the lockdown that we're all in. And there's ways to lock down your Zoom session. So uh, quick ones, a couple quick ones right off the bat. Make sure that your meeting room has a password. Uh, enable your your waiting room. So if you know the people that are coming into your meeting, uh, like yesterday, our Rotary Club, we have our Rotary Club meetings now on Zoom as well. I have enabled the waiting room so that, because everybody that joins our Rotary meeting, we already know because they're members. Or if they're guests, then we already know who they are because they've been pre-announced. And so if you know who's coming in to your Zoom meeting, make sure you enable the, the, uh, the meeting room. Uh, there's uh, disabling screen sharing. So you can also turn off the option for guests to uh, share their screen with your meeting room. Uh, obviously, you don't want people just dropping into your Zoom meeting and taking over your session and sharing their screen and, and doing whatever uh, malicious things they want to do with their time and your audience. So those are a couple of the big things. Uh, that was a very good question. There's lots of articles now that are being posted on that topic. So uh, make sure you, that if you're hosting Zoom meetings or any other video conferencing platform that, uh, that you take the steps to secure those meetings. You know, it's a great, they're great conveniences to have. They're obviously enabling uh, collaboration and uh, integrate or uh, interaction much like this. So, uh, but make sure you take the time to avoid those uh, nuisances as they were. Uh, let's see, another question here. Uh, do we look at other options for backing up now that we're using the cloud? So, yes, great question. If, if you, uh, whether you did before the lockdown or after the lockdown, if you are using a cloud-based service, and this has always been the case, again, pre-lockdown or during the lockdown, if you're using a cloud-based service like uh, Office 365, you're using the OneDrive or you're using uh, Google uh, Drive through the Google G Suite platform, make sure that you have some sort of solution in place that backs up all that information without your intervention. Obviously, here at Aileron IT, we have a number of clients using Office 365, uh, OneDrive, and then we have some clients using Google G Suite. So they're using the Google Drive inside of that platform. And we have those clients set up on automated backups uh, that backs up all their information, 
all their emails, their contacts, their calendar entries, their uh, OneDrive files or their Google, file, Google Drive files. Uh, make sure that your IT provider is backing up all that information. Because if you look really close, and I'm, I'm gonna pick on uh, the Office 365 platform uh, specifically, if you look at their usage agreements, their uh, end, user, end user license agreements, whatever you wanna call them, if you look at those agreements, that Microsoft specifically says in those agreements that they guarantee you will be able to access your information from wherever you're at. So if you are in your hometown, if you are across the country, if you're overseas, Microsoft ensures that you will be able to access your data. Microsoft does not guarantee that your data will be, uh, that they don't guarantee the integrity of your data. So if somebody goes in with malicious intent and deletes your data, uh, hits it with ransomware and encrypts all your data, Microsoft says, you can get to your data, but we can't actually guarantee that what you are seeing is what you expect to see. So make sure that your, your IT provider has some sort of backup in place. So great question, thank you for that one. Uh, another question here, uh, my home network used to work just fine, but now we have college students and uh, my husband is now working from home as well and it's suffering. So common question and I'm, I've answered this one before, but I'll answer it again for the benefit of everybody here. Your home network is now a small business network. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, beforehand, you may have had one or two people kind of intermittently using it. Uh, you may have been using it for Netflix periodically in the evening, but now you have, you know, in some cases, you've got four, four individuals or more constantly hammering on your internet connection at home. And so there's two things you want to look at. One is your router. So your home router generally is not set up to handle this kind of business level amount of traffic. So you might have to upgrade your router, uh, whether it's a wireless router or even a wired router. We've seen some of these low end uh, consumer grade routers that people pick up at Target or Best Buy or you know various different retail stores that they're, they're suitable for periodic home use, but they're not great when so many devices are connecting to them. Because don't forget that, you know, outside of your smartphones and your laptops and your computers, you've also got home security systems and TVs and uh, remote doorbells. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that these home routers are simply not designed to handle in terms of the number of devices and tr now add uh, additional traffic. So you might need to upgrade your router. Now, do that first and then if that doesn't work uh, you might need to also increase the speed of your internet connection what we see in a lot of homes historically is that their download speed is faster than their upload speed uh, when you're talking about uh, individuals that need remote access they're maintaining a VPN connection back to their home office whatever the case is those remote access connections need a more dedicated uh, guaranteed bandwidth than simply clicking on a link on a web page or you know watching a YouTube video here periodically those remote access need connections need a more guaranteed bandwidth so what's probably happening is that your home internet connection is not able to maintain a high enough upload speed now the different your upload speed is going to be a lot less than what your remote access connection uh, or all of these remote access connections need to maintain a positive experience. So if the replacing the home router doesn't work, then you may need to upgrade your home internet connection for a faster upload speed. So give those uh, two bullet points some thoughts here. Um, let's see, I've already answered that one. I don't see other, any other new questions. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, but if you've uh, watched for this long, thank you very much. My name is Isaac Grover. I'm the president of Aileron IT in Hudson, Wisconsin. We are the largest proactive IT provider in Western Wisconsin. We also have a number of clients in the Eastern Twin Cities metro area as well. You can find us online, aileronit.com. 
or give us a call 715-377-0440. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Have a great Friday afternoon and we'll see you next week.